What's up and welcome to day 384. Make it Songbringer. Oh yeah. Y'all ready to get down? Huh? Make some video games? That's what we're doing today. I'm working on the shadows. <clears throat> There's been this weird shadow glitch for a long time. And um, I'm trying to fix it. So, oh here was where's this area at where I can show you this shadow glitch. It's weird because it's it's so intermittent. I don't know why it would possibly be doing this, but sometimes the shadow the only way you can see it now is see that? The these these left top left and right statue things have their shadows, and when I throw the top hats, sometimes they'll flicker. There oh that one's flickering a little bit. They flicker like this darker color. Yo, what's up, Teak? What's up, Arcane? Welcome, guys. How's your game going, Teak? So, yeah, that's my goal today, is to try and... F it's, it's such a mis mysterious mystery that I really want to get to the bottom of it, and but also just make the game more efficient and stuff. What's up, Zilton? You're having a problem? What's the problem? And what kind of controller are you using, and what, what platform are you on? So, um, I'm attacking this, prob this, this situation here with the flickering shadow glitch from a weird, from a, a backwards angle. Usually I'll try and attack a problem head on and be like, alright, what's, how do I solve this? But I've tried, already tried leaving, or I've already tried like, Attacking this problem from so the from the direct angle so many times that I can't figure it out So I'm just gonna try doing it the other way around where I do everything else besides it But it's still related to it to try and hope that I fix it <clears throat> Yeah, I heard about Britain leaving the EO the EU sorry Yeah, that's big news man. That is inc that's big news that not just for Britain, but for the world I tried to map buttons on my Xbox One, on Windows 10, and when I got to the B button, after assigning it, it quits as if I press B to get back. Oh, really? Ah, uh, I wonder if, well, let's... Uh. It might have been a bug I added recently. Or something. Let's see. I know it's not how it's meant to be at all. Wait, are you? That's since yesterday. I checked the exchange rate yesterday. Wait, so one US dollar, no, 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 the pound is still tr is still stronger than the dollar. No, no, Zilton, check us out. The US dollar is still worth 0.73 pounds. Yeah, the, the pound is still, is still strong, it's still stronger than the, the, um, the euro still stronger than the dollar, stronger than pretty much every other currency out there. Pound's always been strong. What's up, Zanger? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it it, it is arcane. It is. Oh wait, wait. But uh, um, I only have done mappings for the Xbox 360 controller, so. It's not going to automatically, you're right, Arcane, it's not going to automatically map the Xbox One yet. I, I have it on my Trello list to buy an Xbox One controller and so I can map them because I have to actually look at the exact mappings and stuff and the name of the controller just to make sure it all maps correctly. <clears throat> Uh, 
Oh. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and map. Um, let me just back up my controls real quick. I just want to see if this is something I, a bug. This is perhaps a bug I introduced recently. Yes, you learned about shaders and did one. Good for you, man. Shaders are are, are badass. So you can do so much with them. All right. Input. I'll reset my controls. All right, so up, down, left, A, B. Ah, yep. That is definitely a bug I just added recently. Good, ca good catch, Zyger. I mean, Arcane, sorry. Good catch, Arcane. Thank you, man. I'm going to fix this right now uh, on this stream. So this is... um. This is pretty simple. It's just that the interface is counting that B as a back. You're going to a manga anime course? Cool. You had school prom? Nice. How was it? Thank you, Gushorn. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, oh Zilton. Poor Zilton. So in interfaces, this is like a class that manages all the user interfaces. Um, and when it, it ticks the interface, something in, something in here. Um, if I change this one line right here to if on tick is not equal to null pointer and then on tick or I mean uh, return on tick fix delta I want to I, I want to see if that fixes it first of all but then I also need to check if that's gonna break anything else <laughs> shadows yes we need shadows templates lambdas variadic templates what's up sound dongs do I have a discord server no I don't yet um, is that something cool to get these days it is huh people everybody's getting a discord server or discord page or whatever I should wait what's a discord server what's the dis difference between a discord server and a, like a discord page Pause button working. Oh, because I rebound my controls. All right, all right. So press keyboard. Oh, damn you. What the? Oh, I reset all my controls. Okay, copy. Current saves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't need I don't need one at this point. I don't need the one at this point. I don't need anything else that's gonna take more time away from from making this game. <clears throat> yeah, Teak, I heard, I heard, I heard. Yeah, I read all about the e the the uh their Britain's independence from the EU and uh we just check I just checked the exchange rate. At least the exchange rate's still pretty much the same it, it, it was a big worry right the whole all of europe was like god damn is it is our economy gonna crash now again 
So at least so far, it doesn't look like things are going to crash. But shit, I, I, I don't know anything about the economy, any economies. So I guess I'm just talking hopeful talk. Ten percent inflation in two hours. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's um cool. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad some other people out there are thinking the economy is gonna be fine too. Sounds like a normal market reaction to uncertainty. Right, yeah. If you asked me, you're saying that you would have had more predictable outcome, but which would have increased confidence in the pounds. Right. What's up, Boogie? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, damn it. At Kyle24 writes, hey, Blake. Oh, I accidentally clicked a something. Close this. How do I close this? Oh man. It's the only way I know how to close anything on this Twitch app is just to, like minimize it and then close it. Yeah, I think things will recover too. Right, yeah, I know. Right. Oh no, your hard drive died, but thankfully you backed it all up, right? Don't <laughs> tell us there's a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's a, it's a, I'm sure it's a tough choice on, you know... I don't know what to what to say. Yeah. Yes, good. You got the you had the backup. You got a new hard drive yet? How the hell are you talking to us if you don't have a, a hard drive? Alright, alright. So let's see if that fixed it. Input reset player one controls. Nice. Okay, that fixed it. But let's make sure it didn't break anything else. Oh, Chromebook. SSD. Yes, you got an SSD! Oh, yes, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> on tick, where else did I do this on tick method? Cool. Well, only one place, basically. There. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, this is one of them. The Mega Seed. Uh, and this is one where I do, would not want it to... Damn it. Oh, I got an idea, I got an idea. Okay, I'll keep this as it was. And then... Only, go, you can't go back unless there's some choices.
Same thing with advancing forward. Dang, that should be a, if choice is greater than zero. There we go. The drive didn't completely die. Oh. Ah. So the old drive is, you can still copy things over with the old drive? Crazy. Dang, basically all this needs requires choices. Are there bees? There are no bees yet. I'm not re yeah, I kind of am. I'm not, uh, well, so I'm not rewriting the whole engine, but I am kind of the, the abstract Part of it is that the way it moves the shadow, like if there's like, let's say an entity has like four different shadows, one's, you know, going this way, one's going that way, one's going this way. I'm going to make it so if they get really, like two shadows get really close, they're going to like blend into one shadow. So first of all, that's more efficient because it's one of the slowest parts of the graphics engine is the shadows because of, because they uh, require custom, um, attributes sent to the shader um, but also also just to make it look better and secondly to try and thirdly to try and fix this one little shadow glitch that's always happened Okay, let's see if that works. Yes, I do have all the dungeon themes down. Yes. They're not all in the game yet, but yeah, they're all planned out. There's going to be um, the, the elemental dungeon. So there's going to be a fire dungeon, an ice dungeon, acid dungeon, fear dungeon, lightning dungeon. And then there's going to be two more swordless dungeons, and then there's going to be the last, the tenth dungeon, dungeon actually. It's not really a dungeon, it's just the tower. Which you guys don't, there's not even in the game yet. But there will be a giant tower in the world where you can climb it and you fight the last boss. Sort of, sort of dark tower-y. Okay, so that works, and I think that's not going to break anything else either, because it's just written a little bit better. So there we go, bug fixed, nice. Yes, the fear dungeon. What is up with my computer? Oh my god. Never heard the fan just be that loud all of a sudden. Jeez. Closed date, closed instruments. Stop with this. It's crazy. Could you guys hear how the high pitched whine from that? That was crazy. Yes. Thank goodness for Git.
<laughs> no, okay, you didn't break anything. You just noticed the bug that I broke. It was my fault for breaking it. It was your credit for finding it. Good on you. It shouldn't be too... Yeah, this is a pretty simple check-in right here. Just making sure that if the interface... The interface basically, when it, if it's going to advance the interface or if it's going to back up the interface to go backwards, it needs to have some choices. So that's a really simple check-in and a good bug fix, and I'll add this to the change log as well. Thanks. Thanks, Arcane. How, it's Arcane, how did the exams go, by the way? Huh? Okay, and if you want to, if you if you really want to, uh, Arcane, you can always manually bind your controls in your text and in, in your saves.txt. This is kind of what it looks like. You'll if you've already bound a few of the controls, you'll have the most of the stuff done, and you you might be able to just kind of guess what buttons. But is it basically you just want to set like your button numbers, like button four or five or whatever, to your controls like A. B, X, Y. You just have to kind of like figure, guess for X, Y, L, R, select the start. Kind of sucks, but. Or just wait for the next version that comes out this next week. <laughs> yes, I know. I need a block of dry eyes. When am I going to publish this hotfix? Yeah, like like I was just saying, this is going to be next week. I already published a uh, a version just a couple days ago. No, yeah, just a, yeah, just a couple days ago. So I, I'm I'm versioned out, man. I can't do this. But like I said, if you really if you want to, um, if you want to play right now, dude, send me send me your text, send me your saves text, and I'll guess for you. You know what I mean? We can do this right now. If you want to play right now, all we need is all we need to do is get you that in your saves.txt. Something like this. In fact, you should you should try this. Try this exact settings right here. This is my Xbox 360 wired controller. Type this stuff in. Here. Put this on like paste bin for you or something. Do you need an account to be on Pastebin? No? There we go. Oh, look at this bookmark, Twitch chat. Whoa, it was so fast. Your game saves. Yes, Steam does back up your game saves, usually for most games. <laughs> See? Some people submerge their computers in non-static, super-cooled fluid solution. Oh, yeah, like a Bose-Einstein condensate. So, yeah, Boogie, it does for Songbringer, that's for sure. It does back up your saves for Songbringer. So, yeah, if you just... just Yeah, you reinstall Steam and, most, and just reinstall... Your, most of your games should have their saves. Yo, what's up, Azarus? What's up? I'm working on the shadows today. I was just fixing a bug there with the controls, bindings. Oh, you figured it out? You bypass the mapping just having the B button pressed all the time? <laughs> nice. Nice solution, dude. 
And then I can map the rest of the buttons apart from one, which I wrote manually in the safe. Oh, wow, nice. Okay, all right, Arcane, nice. I'm glad. I'm glad you got that. I will definitely fix that. Irving, it's already fixed. You just gotta upload it. So, yes, it shall be uploaded. Uploading shall commence this next week. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I know, right? It's kind of like, an, sometimes it's kind of annoying if you want to delete the backup, but you got to, if you really want to delete a backup, you have to like overwrite it with a new file and then run your Steam again, and then it'll sync up the blank file. Okay, so back to the shadows. Um, like I was saying, there's kind of three reasons I'm upgrading the shadows right now. The biggest one here there is just the, hold on. Take out that. Controls are. I gotta reapply controls. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so the biggest reason I'm working on the shadows today is the shadow glitch. And you can see if I throw my top hat, if you pay attention to the two shadows in the top left from those two statues, they flicker a little bit. They flicker to like a darker color. And this is such a mystery to me. I've tried to solve this program, this problem, from so many angles that I'm going at, I just like, I'm trying to not take the direct approach anymore and try and solve the other issues that I think that may be affecting it. So, this is so weird. I don't know why, why it's, why those shadows flicker. Um, but the other reasons are to performance and to make it look better too. Yeah, Wizard Funk. Oh, you can delete the backup. Ah. Oh. Apple's trackpads and mice do weird things on the hardware level. Uh huh. Whoa. Huh. I wonder why they do that. Maybe it has something to do with their. Uh... Yeah, all the all the magic weirdness that they, the features, man. It's the features, features they put in. So render system. This function here called set shadow colors is totally inefficient because it goes and it sets it sets the shadow colors after it's already looped. It loops over all of the shadow components after it's already looped over all of the render components. And pretty much a render component always has a shadow either. A sh there's never a shadow component without a render component. So. Yeah, so set shadow colors is called from the bottom of animate lights. And move shadow is the other thing. Yeah, multi-touch. Crazy shading? What's that? Yeah. Oh, this is an interpolate movement where it moves the shadow. Which happens lots of times per second. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe moving the shadow should only happen on a tick. Create shadow also moves the shadow. All right. Okay, so set shadow colors. I basically can take everything out of set shadow colors and put it into move shadow. Huh.
Okay, so all these variables need to be moved somewhere so that egg capacity is in. Hmm. Kawasi. Oh, well, that kind of looks pretty cool. I see what you're saying. So this is like a... Huh, it adds some nice saturation and stuff. Let's see what it does. Huh. Yeah, right, the colors. They do look a lot more vibrant there. Right, right. I wonder, I wonder. Oh, Kawasi is a guy, is a person. Is that right? Yeah, Kawasi. Okay, so this is not a shader. This is a guy. This is a dude who drew stuff this way. Oh, I thought it was a shader. Okay, so wait, he's he's got a little diagram here. Only here. Oh yeah, he's just increasing the color depth here. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. As the colors get lighter, he's using um, lighter hues. And then as the colors get deeper, he's using deeper hues for his shading. This is a, yeah, this is a standard technique for, for artists. And um, I suppose you could write a shader to do this to make it, your stuff look even better. But it's really simple. See, if you just, if you look at his palette here on the left, this is his normal palette, right? You got this sort of boring gray up here. You've got one monochromatic bit here where it just goes different shades of the same red hue. Here, what he's doing with the orange right there is instead of using gray, he's using um, a lighter hue than the red the tone that's normal there. And then also with the blue down here, he's using a deeper tone. So he's going into purple right there and blue the deepest here. So yeah, it's it's a really simple technique. He's yeah, that guy is the shader exactly. Right, yeah, warm highlights, cool shadows, totally. That's exactly the same concept. Yep. It wouldn't be that hard to write a shader though that would kind of make all your colors a little bit more like that. But th then again, you can always just draw your art that way, you know? So like, and I do try and do that as often as possible. Um, Lighter Thief, Lighter Thief taught me that. So you guys have seen Lighter Thief on the theme here, the stream here. Lighter Thief's cool. It's got a great art style. Okay, I want to see if this even works. If I eat a cactus right here, the colors for this for this all the shadows should get really psychedelic. See, they didn't. They didn't really get psychedelic that time. They used to. So it's not even working anyways.
Here, I'm just going to make this permanent, always psychedelic. Planet Thief, never heard of it? Uh, right, oh yeah, the dull, desaturated look is also useful, right, in some cases. You wrote your, you rewrote your entire script event system? Whoa. And it's flexible? Right on. Yeah, yeah, here's what the shadows are supposed to look like when you're, when you've eaten the cactus. What if that was 1.0? Nice, your gamepad code, 95% complete. Right on, right on, that's awesome. Yeah, sounds it's always a lot of work, right? It's good when you get when you do a lot of work and you feel super happy about it like that. Zilton, you're having trouble writing creepy, unsettling music? That surprises me. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm sure you'll figure it out, man. What what do you kind of what are you making music in? What software? Mix color, psychedelic colors. Maybe this should be 1.0. Or psychedelic times 1.0. Maybe I should log what the psychedelic is each time. X, X, no, one F, psychedelic. Oh, free loops, nice. Hmm, salad dogs, good suggestion. Do it entirely in G-sharp major. There you go. Yep, those sharp and flats, flat keys are really, um, really great for making creepy music. Forty. Oh, is it? Did it? Oh, I've had it on sixty frames a second the whole stream. No wonder it's killing my CPU. All right. Psychedelic, let's eat a cactus. There, now it's looking psychedelic. And then it fades back into normal. Good, okay, so it was working, it just wasn't working enough. 0 0.1, 0 0.4. Oh, it only ever got to 0 0.6. That also explains something. Lens psychedelic gets strength. What is this? Psychedelic strength. Ah.
Yeah, that's the point, Zilton. That is the point. You already see some things you shouldn't. Um, and you and I have lots of plans to see more things. But I like your thought on, on maybe you could hear things. It's pretty cool. You should do something like that. Like something you could hear only when you eat a cactus. <laughs> Boogie, what is this? What is this? C, C, A, A, A minor, A minor. Uh, no A sharps. It's like hot cross buns or something. Psychedelic strength. It's all in this. Oh, it's right here. Psychedelic strength. Yeah, okay, I'm taking out that. And then this is that. Maybe not. Maybe I'll maybe I won't, but there, so that should make it stronger. <laughs> you reject the A sharps. I, I I do you know what? For I've been a musician for like, you know, over ten years. And for most of that time, I was always like, dude, what is the difference between an A sharp and a B flat? There's no difference. I'm gonna just ignore the fact that the music community even has that difference. And finally I figured out that the difference is just context. There really is a big difference. If you if you play an A sharp after you play a C or whatever, that's something. You know, and then if you play a, a B flat after a D or whatever, or a C or whatever, I don't know, whatever. The point is, within context, the flat or the sharp actually does make sense. And that's the only sense I can make of it. I'm not trained in music, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's that's my own non-professional opinion. Oh, that's the Mario Brothers Underground song? Oh, do 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 Oh, I see why right now you're talking about sharp. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the key signatures, right? So now the psychedelic strength should be stronger. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. There, whoa, that's, that is pretty strong, dang. I forgot how, how this used to look. This is looking a lot better now with that psychedelic colors. I wonder what that looks like inside the, the dungeon. Coltrane. Uh-huh, right, yeah. Guitar is a really easy one like that to be able to bend your strings and all that. Play some notes that are slightly different. Ooh, this is interesting. The shadowy pillar. Yeah. This is way more colorful now. It's good to fix systems that you just didn't know were broken. Gosh, I never knew that was broken. Okay, so back to applying this to all the shadows in a more efficient way. Tell me that this. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay, well, the first thing I could do is. I definitely got an idea here. So this is kind of inefficient how it's creating these colors and doing it a bunch of different times. 
So really these colors should be mixed. Oh wait, wait, this is uh the psychedelic color is different. What's up, Clock? Welcome, welcome. How you been, Clock? Okay, I was wrong. This has to be here. At least make these three variables though more efficient. Dirt color. Dirt color now. And water color now. You're good? Nice. How's life? Life is really great, man. Life is great. It's a roller coaster. I'm on a high right now. Songbringer is my role, is a high of my life. I'm really lo loving this game. Loving how it's turning out. Loving how it surprises me every time I play it. Loving creating it. Uh, it's, uh, I got a lot, of, a lot of love in my heart for what I do. And who I'm doing it with. Shoot, I'm sharing it with you. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Always appreciated your support and stuff and everything else. Stuff and everything else. Like that blanket statement? Yes, exactly. Right, yeah. It's a good feeling to have your hard work pay off, right? Yeah. Hard work is definitely starting to pay off with this game. And I hope it hope it pays off even more. Thanks, Sal Dongs. I hope I hope this I hope Songbringer does kind of stand as a big inspiration to other game developers too. You know, I started this project wondering if one man could create a game, as well as market a game, and do it all well. And so far it's turning out that a, one person can, you know, and I hope that is a big inspiration to other game devs out there. You can do it too. If one person can go and create a game and market it themselves and do all that kind of stuff, like, other people can do it too. So that's kind of why I started the live stream. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of share the process of, of game development from the very beginning, from the very, very first moment of coding so we've got a light component lightness here all I need to do is apply it to the dirt color now rocket bunny what's up rocket bunny right yeah without well I am kind of using I am using a game engine here it's not a fancy fancy one. Cocos 2DX is a more of a DIY style engine. Set current shadow colors. Dirt color now is this, watercolor now is that, and that should be more efficient. Yeah, right. Putting it on YouTube too. So, uh, so right. So for posterity, right. So people can look back at this project and say, "All right, look, back in 2015, 2016, this one dude did this game all alone. If he did it, I can do it too." That's the whole point. That's really why I wanted to do this is because I want other people to believe that they can do it too. Somebody proved it, you know.
Oh, right. Yeah, the engine's not drag and drop. I understand what you're saying there. Right. You say you're wasting your time if you don't use Unreal or Unity. That's some pretty dogmatic statements there. Take a look back and say, yep, that's a game. That's probably what a lot of people, most people will say, yep, that's a game. But some game devs out there will go, yep, that's a game, and it was made by one person, and if he can do it, I can do it too. That's really what I wanted to get across. <laughs> Make my game for me. H. Yeah, it's DIY style. Okay, I'm. I'm. What's up, fan? Why are you off so hot today, fan? Oh, it's game show. Oh, game show's killing it, guys. Maybe I should restart the stream. Actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to restart the stream. So, sorry people watching on YouTube. We were just talking about posterity and all that stuff, but I'm going to have to close game show because it's, it's being a little resource whore right now. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I'm going to close game show, but I'm going to restart the stream. So, sorry again, people on YouTube, but this is the end of the video. And people here on Twitch, I'll be right back. <laughs> the math. I, 